There's a saying like, when you open your mouth, your brain is on display. And I consider myself fortunate because I've aligned myself with people who I believe to be intellects, intellectuals. And I learn a lot from these people. Sometimes I just zip it up and I just listen. I just absorb the knowledge. And it feels so good uh, not just to be around people who are intellectuals, but also people who have integrity. When you meet somebody who is both intelligent and has morals, it's like, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's a beautiful thing because in this matrix that we live in, a lot of times people who are intelligent will, will use their mind to do wicked activity. But if it's accompanied with morals and it's accompanied with dignity, decency, and honor, it's like, oh, it's like amazing. So when you meet somebody with intelligence and integrity, it's like, you're the best. And, um, you know, I was thinking like, I try my best, you know, to not, to not be condescending. I try my best to, cause you know, with knowledge, like there's a bunch of stuff that I don't know. There's a bunch of things that I'm ignorant to. There's a bunch of things that I just learned. There's a bunch of, um, like there's levels to this awareness. You know, there's people that can do all kinds of things that I can't do. Um, if I was, you know, intelligent in the sense of, um, you know, my fiscal intelligence, I would have, you know, buildings and buildings with my name on it, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot for me to learn. But one thing I do know is that when you get around people with real knowledge, um, it's a great thing with some real knowledge and some real integrity. And the reason why I love the people that I have gravitated towards is because they ask the right questions. You know, for a lot of people, you can very easily pull the wool over their eyes because they're they're not going to be intellectually astute. They're not going to challenge and they're not going to ask the right questions. But when you have a mind and you're using your mind, you're going to ask the right questions. And the people that I know that, you know, I'm talking about, like, the people that I know that I respect the most, most of them, like, they don't drink like me. I don't drink. They don't do drugs. They, most of them don't even smoke weed. Like, they eat, like, really good food because they value their mind so much that they don't want to tamper with their mind. They're not on any prescription drugs, no medication, because it's like when you have something, like a beautiful mind, you your, your gratitude to God is to protect and preserve your mind. And that includes what you are putting inside of your mind, who you're listening to, who you surround yourself with, who you let control your mind, <clears throat> all those things. And uh, <clears throat> just asking the right questions. You know, when when somebody thinks like they're like, I, I was, I encountered somebody who thought that they were like, I don't know, it was like being, they were being like cute or like whatever. And just asking the right questions. Well, okay, so you purchased a condominium without meeting the tenant that already lived there? Yes, okay, so you purchased a condominium, but you never met the tenant prior to you purchasing that condominium. And then the stranger to you, the tenant that was a stranger to you, you went ahead, you offered them a couple year lease. Yes, okay, got it. So you never met this person, you offered them a couple year lease, and um, it was a buyer's market, so that you had like any condo, like any condominium you could have bought, but you bought this one which already had a tenant in it. Okay, got it. Didn't meet the tenant, didn't, had no idea who this person was, but relied on other, you relied on third party information to assess this individual's personality. Yes, okay. So you relied on people who you trusted to give you accurate information Perhaps they deceived you, perhaps they didn't give you accurate information. And now you're, tr you're desperately trying to get the tenant out on the back end when you made like very rookie, like ignorant mistakes on the front end. But then you wanna be like respected for your mind and your decisions. 
but you want people to look at you like a, you're a boss. But the decisions that you're making are, are anything but that. And now you're in a situation where it's a liability because you made horrible judgment calls. You made, you made horrible decisions. And now you're likely gonna lose everything based off of your preconceived notions, based off of your isms and schisms, based off of you relying on third party information. And now you're trying to wiggle your way out of that. But they got the nerves to open your mouth and say that somebody else is childlike. I've never heard of anything more childlike than that. No, you signed up for an agreement. You, you made some sort of an agreement or bet. You lost that bet and now you have to keep up with your end of the bargain on that. There's no wiggling your way out of that. Be an adult and deal with the repercussions of your actions. And so when I talk about my tribe and the people that I respect, like we ask these types of questions, you know, we, we, we um, think along those type of lines in, in, in a rational and level-headed kind of way. And mostly the people that I admire and respect worked very smart and very hard for their money so they don't make stupid mistakes because just like their minds that they protect and preserve, they protect and preserve their assets as well. And so they don't do things like make stupid bets or, you know, um, operate in a way that would would be would, would 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 jeopardize their assets, would jeopardize the lifestyle that they work so hard to obtain and maintain. And to me, that's usually how I can, you know, as far as just decipher who is a real boss versus who is not, who is a silver spoon person versus someone who actually had to use their intellect to navigate. Use their, use their mind, use their creativity, use their ingenuity to be able to get what they wanted versus somebody who was just given it or relied on some sort of like socialist, social circle, I don't know, whatever organization. It could be, you know, an organization that bonds them through hate, whatever secret society, whatever. Um, they got their money and their power that way. Um, and then it reflects in their decisions that they make. When they make stupid decisions, it's like, ah, well, you make stupid decisions because you never really had to like work. You know, you didn't, you didn't use your mind to get where you were. You relied on other people. You used other people as your stepping stones and you took advantage of other people. You, you, you took the easy way out. Rather than actually working, you know, on yourself, you decided to be, you know, prey on other people to get what you want. And so when shit hits the fan, and it's like you're over here bragging and everybody's just looking at you like, please keep talking because you're displaying your mind right now. Your mind is on display and everybody's just looking at you like, how dumb is, how dumb do you have to be to do something like that? It's very, very stupid. It's very ignorant. And what I came to realize is that, like when I said America runs on Duncan, America really runs on your, on your stupidity. Because now they're at the point where they don't feel like they even have to come up with excuses that make sense. Like they're banking on you that being that dumb that they could just like things that don't even add up. Like it doesn't even add up. Like obviously there's a lot more to this story than what you're telling us. Cause this shit doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. But they're so used to you being dumb that they feel like they can actually get away with with this. And you're not dumb. You just haven't risen up to your power. You just haven't risen up to your potential. You're not inadequate. You're just operating on, a, on an inadequate frequency. You're not, you know, weak. You just haven't risen to your power. And they're really banking on you not realizing who you are. 
And I use the current, our current circumstance, the analogy of a company, right? Because we're talking business right now. Why not? So let's say America is a corporation, which it is. And you work for a corporation, which you do. And the leader of the corporation understands something that they haven't let you know that the company has gone bankrupt. And at this point, they're like robbing Peter to pay Paul. But you're showing up to work every day and you're giving your all. With, with the ignorance of the fact that the company has already gone bankrupt. And he doesn't want to tell you or she doesn't want to tell you, the leader of the company, the owner or whoever, because you're not going to show up. You're not going to buy into the system. You're not going to buy into the corporation anymore because the company's bankrupt. And that's pretty much what we're dealing with right now. Like this whole infrastructure is falling, but it is relying. The only thing that's keeping it up is your lack of recognition that this thing is done, the system is done. And if you knew what I knew about how desperate these people are, they're so desperate to control you, they're so desperate. They're so desperate to keep you ignorant. Because the issue is that what's gonna happen next is gonna be an environment that they cannot, not only thrive, not thrive in, they can't thrive in, they can't do the things that they've been doing. They, they will have no power and they might not even be able to survive. So what you're looking at right now is like, this is their desperation, but they're clawing on to their dear lives because what's to come, they, may, they likely won't even be able to survive. And you're ignorant to the fact that like all of these tactics that they're using is, is mere desperation. Like social distancing alone is because they don't want you unified. They don't want you to connect with your tribe because they realize, damn, this whole thing is about to this whole thing is about to go down. Then there's way more more of them. There's way, way too many of them versus us. We gotta figure something out. The minute that they unite, the minute that they join forces, we're finished. Because there's going to be somebody in that bunch that's going to be like me. That's going to be like some of my, my mentors, the people that I respect and listen to. That's going to let you guys know. Oh, time out, guys. It's time for you to snap, snap out of this illusion. They're going to wake you up, get you out of the spell, get you out of the hypnosis. That made you think that it wasn't all about you when it's always been about you. When you've always had the power the whole time. And that's really what they're scared of because the minute that you wake up to your power, you recognize your power is the minute that their power is, is gone. The minute that America says, you know, Joe Biden is not Captain Planet. He's not here to save us. We're here to save ourselves. Then what he's going to look at it like, well, what am I here for? But if you're like desperately clinging on to this political system that really doesn't have your best interests at hand, it gives them a role to play. So they, 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 they are relying on you not waking up to that fact. And for me, it's like, you know, I've been in D.C. or whatever, and um, the way that I see it is I'm always at peace. I'm very much at peace with my creator. I'm very much at peace with, you know, spiritual law, cosmic law. Um, I don't worry because I've been told I got nothing to worry about by somebody who is very, who's very honest, who operates with extreme honor, dignity, decency, and integrity. You have nothing to worry about. They have something to worry about. You have nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about. And so I don't worry. But they constantly have been trying to like provoke me, antagonize me, to like have me go back and forth because they operate on such a high level of combat war and hatred and rage and they have like all of these feelings like all of these things that they got to get out like like for me right because everybody wants to feel purposeless purposeful 
right? Everybody wants to feel like when they wake up that there's a purpose. And I had to like realize that I was being played, that these people were waking up just to like come against me just to, so they could feel like they had like they had a purpose, like they had something to do. I'm like, really? Like I, I was being used, you know, like I'm being used. Like that's the whole reason that you, you're waking up because you want you, you want to feel like you have a purpose and you're coercing a situation that really shouldn't be, you know, a situation of, of like war and like all of this friction and all of these things, you know, to like, so you can feel like your energy is, you know, this isn't about me, it's about you. This isn't about, you know, it, it has really very little to do with me. It has everything to do with you. You want to feel like you're working for something. Like, people really don't work for money. Every company leader, every company head knows that. People don't really work for money. They work for causes. You want to feel like, yeah, we, we've got to go against her. You know, she's the problem or whatever. But it's really not about me. It's about you. You want to feel alive. You want to feel like invigorated, like passionate. You want to feel like all these things. But what I'm here to say is that you're operating very ignorantly. Because I'm not the enemy. I'm not. You're not my enemy either. I may refer to you from time to time as the enemy, but you're not the enemy either. You are also being manipulated. You are also being used. You are also under mind control. You're under a spell. You're trying to put me under mind control. You're under mind control. You're trying to exploit me. You're being exploited. So in a way, you're a victim. You're a victim to a circumstance that you don't want to be a part of. And your anger is not at me. Your anger is the fact that you signed up for something that you really don't even want to be a part of anymore. You don't want to have to do this. You don't want to have to feel these feelings that you have right now. You wake up every single day, you feel so angry. You're, you're full of rage, you're full of hatred. Love doesn't even, you don't even think about what a life of love would be. You're in so such resistance to the idea of love. And you're like, how the fuck did I sign up for this shit? And then you're caught up in a game where like, you're caught up in a game and there's no win, there's no win to this game. And you don't have peace. You can't sleep at night. But you're caught up in a game and there's no winning because you, you're playing a game with people who don't operate with integrity. You're serving a master whose main attribute is deceit. Like their primary like attribute is like deceit. And, and the people that you've surrounded yourself, that's their primary attribute as well. And that's the frequency that you're operating on too, a frequency of deceit. So now, like when paranoia kicks in and you're fearful and you can't sleep and you're popping all these pills and like your life is spinning out of control but you're trying to keep it cool, but really you're like going nuts. Because who's to trust? You're like, you know your whole clique is untrustworthy because their, their, their main attribute is deceit, is a lack of honor, is a lack of integrity. You know that shit's about to hit the fan. You know that Babylon is falling. And it's like, as, as much as you guys are clicked up, you don't know who's going to be the one to backstab you. Your enemy could be the person that you're laying down with every night. It could be your spouse. Likely. Because who's loyal when nobody, when nobody operates on the frequency of loyalty? You can't expect decency from indecent people. You can't expect honesty from people who are dishonest. So it's like, I've used this example before, when the devil turns his back on you, even, even the people, the devil loves nobody. Satan loves nobody. Even the people that worship him, he doesn't even love them. And so when the devil turns his back on you, and you're like, you lied to me. You told me I was gonna have all these, you lied to me, you lied to me. He's gonna be like, Psh. Do you know who I am? Nah, sweetheart, you lied to yourself. What, you thought I was an angel? What, you thought I was the God people over there? No, 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 no. If you're scared, go to church, babe. I'm not that. This ain't that.
You are out of your mind if you thought that I was going to operate with fairly and justly. No, that's them over there. That's the, the good, the righteous over there. I hate this contract. I hate my life. I want to get out. I want out. I want out. Not my problem. Is my main attribute co compassion? Is my main attribute empathy? You can cry to your blue in the face. That is not my main attribute. I kill, steal, and destroy. What you? I'm sorry, did you not get the memo? When you devoted your soul to me, what did you think you were signing up for? Like, you better, you gotta take the L. You gotta take it like a, you gotta take it like a champ. You gotta take the L. I'm not here to save you. I mean, that's adulting, right? You signed up for a boss that doesn't really have like compassion like that, that doesn't take excuses. It's like, like, okay, if you don't carry out my assignment, it's the end of your ass. Now, the creator that I serve is like, believes in repentance and forgiveness, kindness and compassion and second chances in redemption, in fairness, and justice, in joy, and all those things, and love, mostly like a lot of love. And so that's the boss that I chose to adhere to. Like, don't be mad because you made the wrong decision with the boss that you signed up to, you know? Like, don't be mad at me. Because I chose a boss that, that loves me, not a boss that 